guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. I get asked to sex fish all the time and with the vast majority of the species I deal with it's extremely difficult and the most common thing people tell me to try and do is look at the different fin shapes to determine gender. So I thought I would take a minute and do a little fish anatomy 101 with you guys because I get told to look at the wrong fins all the time. Now, fin shape, structure, and anatomy can be important for a bunch of reasons, especially if we get fish that we may not know a whole lot about. The shape of the fish and the shape of the fins can tell you a lot about what kind of water they live in, what sort of behavior they have, and even some of their breeding strategies. So, I've drawn you some pictures. Try not to laugh, this is the first time I've used my art degree, which is not in drawing, in almost 20 years. So, all fish have some of the same fins. You know, they all have a dorsal fin, they all have an anal fin, they all have a ventral fin, and they all have a caudal fin, but there are some differences. And these differences can sometimes give us clues. Now, the most basic anatomy is with our charisins. Now, charisins are our tetras, our pencils, our piranha, our silver dollars, things like that. And they have one unique difference. Charisins, as well as some catfish, have this little tiny fin here between the dorsal and the caudal, which is called the adipose fin. Now that can be important, especially if you're like me and you get in um, a lot of wild fish because there's often random ones that don't match the others. And this little clue can be a good, good way to sort of figure out where to start when trying to ID a fish. Now all fish, as I mentioned, have this dorsal fin, which is the one on the top, the ventral fin, which is the one right on the bottom, these pairs of pectoral fins, which are the ones on their chest, the anal fin and the caudal fin. Now it can be really helpful to know the names of these fins, especially if you're trying to ID a species because most of the information on ID has counts on these fins, the information on the shape of these fins, and also information about the rays or spines in the fins. Now the dorsal in a, in a tetra is most often made up of rays, which are soft spines that the fin is stretched over. All fish also have this operculum, which is a bony plate that covers the gills. The gills are basically how the fish breathe. They draw water in through their mouth, out through, or through the gills, and then out underneath the operculum. If your fish is stressed, you may be able to see the bright red of the gills underneath the gill plate. All of these fins have a specific purpose. Now a lot of them work together, but some of them have unique purposes. So this is our tetra. You can see our cyprinid is very similar. Now cyprids, cyprinids are your carp, your minnows, the true minnows, uh, your, your barbs, your danios, your rasboras, things like that. And as you can tell, they are lacking that adipose fin. They're often more torpedo shaped, narrow in body. And we can often tell by looking at them that they may come from waters that have a bit more current. Because their body is more torpedo shaped, their fins are more streamlined, etc. All fish also have what's called a lateral line, which is those little dots you see down the side of the body. And what those are are sensory pits. They're sort of how the fish tells where they are in the water. A lot of these fish, are what we call isomorphic, which means they don't have any visible distinguishing characteristics of gender other than occasionally the males being brighter or the females being slightly larger or rounder bodied, etc. Then we have fish that are called sexually dimorphic, and that means that the two sexes look very different. This is my terrible drawing of a uh, either a guppy or an endler, take your pick. And these are very sexually dimorphic. In females, this fin here, this ventral fin right here, is fan-shaped. So from a, even a very small size, you can tell the gender of your live bearers based on that fin. 
the males have this long rod shaped ventral fin that they use for internal fertilization. Now there are a few other species that use internal fertilization. In my mind the most interesting are centromopolis or wood cats uh, because they're actually egg layers as well. As well. But that's a, uh, that's a topic for a whole nother time. So if you're trying to sex live bears, obviously the males generally have bigger, more flowy fins, but they also have this, this uh, gonopodium, which is the rod-shaped ventral fin. Gourami have modified pelvic fins used for sensing their environment as they generally come from black water. They're always in pairs, just like with all the other fish, and the rest of their anatomy is generally the same. But you can see, instead of having that more pronounced ventral fin, their anal fin is very long. Cichlids are a bit different in their fin structure. Please keep in mind I'm speaking in generalities here. This, all of this information does not apply to every single fish. A lot of the times you can ID cichlids by being able to count whether they have spines or how many spines or the length of their spines versus the rays. Now the spines are hard and rigid. Some catfish have this too and they can be very sharp. The same goes for their anal fin, which is this back one here. Again, they have all the same other characteristics of other fish. Coriodorus, our little dwarf catfish, have all the same structures as your, your schooling fish, your tetras, your barbs, your, your live bears, etc. But they can sometimes use their pelvic fins here to place their eggs. So you'll see them form a cup with those. You can also tell a lot about how different quarries graze and behave by the shape of their snout. If they have a very long pronounced snout, it's often, they often will dig into the substrate as part of their normal feeding behaviors. If they have a flatter snout, they generally eat off the surface of the substrate. And this information can be especially helpful if you have a planted tank or if you use any sort of substrates that aren't ideal for these very delicate innervated barbells. Coriodorus are kind of interesting in that depending on what species, uh, they can either be isomorphic or dimorphic. In some species, the males and females are totally different colors and in some, they're almost identical. You'll notice as well with them, their pectoral fines, their pectoral fins, are located further down in their body and they often have a very sharp spine in that pectoral fin, which you need to be careful of when netting and handling. Plecos are unique as well. Depending on species, you can tell a lot from their anatomy by looking at them when they suck on the grass, the shape of their teeth, the shape of their sucker, and the shape of their face. They also have barbells, but what's really unique about them is that they have these things called odontodes, which are like bristles, hairs, that grow on various parts of their body, and that can be the best way to tell gender of these fish. Now, that's not for all species, but specifically if you think of things like bristlenose ancestress, they, the males get those very pronounced bristles on their nose. They also get very pronounced hair-like odontodes on their pectoral fins. And you can tell from the shape of this fish that it is one that eats on the bottom. You'll note as well that both the Coriodorus and the Pleco have that adipose fin. Now I think the most interesting fishes to look at when we're talking about fin shape and structure are definitely gobies. This can be especially critical to think about when you're getting in gobies because they're often misidentified. And the shape of their body and the shape of their fins can be, can be absolutely key to figuring out what sort of current they need. There, there are gobies from still water, there are gobies from like straight up rapids. And generally the shape of this dorsal can give you a really good clue as to what kind of water they come from. If it's more elongate and tall, they come from very fast waters. If it's lower and smoother, they generally come from less turbid waters. It's also interesting to note that in the vast majority of species, that dorsal fin is split. The first section has those spines, and the section, second section is softer. They also have modified pelvic fins, which almost form a disc, which allow them to hang on to rocks or surfaces in more uh, 
in more fast flowing water and also to the glass and rocks in our aquariums. This also applies to things like the different um, sucker fishes, the, the flat fishes, the Borneo suckers, your gastromyosons, your pseudogastromyosons. The flatter their face, the faster the water they come from, the rounder or more bulldog appearance to their face, the slower the water they come from. And this is really important because uh, they are a fish, a family of fishes that will do very poorly in the wrong conditions. Oxygen saturation is key. So all these fins have purposes. Uh, the vast majority of them help with stability. You know, the dorsal, the ventral are generally there for stability as well as the anal. The caudal helps with steering. The pectorals move, help with side to side motion. And in some species, uh, specifically dwarf cichlids or even gouramis, looking at the shape of the fin in comparison between the genders can be a good, can be a big help in identifying which sex you have, which is really important if you plan on breeding your fish. So fish anatomy is relevant because it gives us cues about what kind of water they're in, where in the water they inhabit. It can tell us a little bit about their feeding. It can tell us a lot about their breeding. And all in all, just provide us with a little more information on our fish. It's also important to talk about fin health. The deterioration of these fins can have a really significant impact on our critters. The biggest cause of problems is bad water quality. If you ever start to see erosion of your fish's fins, you need to look to see if there are complications with your compatibility or your water quality and really step up your water changes. So I hope this little anatomy lesson helps. If you guys have any ideas for things or terminology you'd like for me to talk about and explain, let me know below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my Tuesday tips or my Sunday Species Spotlights. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Next weekend, I'll be down in Herndon, Virginia for the Catfish Convention on Friday night. And then pretty soon, I'll be at the Aquatic Experience out in Chicago. As always, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, let me know below. And I really look forward to hearing what you guys want to learn about.